All right, for more on this, we are joined by Professor James Russell, who's Associate Professor in the Department of National Security Affairs at NPS. He is joining us live from Monterey. So welcome to Beyond World is One. Big question, of course, is how will Israel respond here? Because Iran has already made it clear that if Israel does, Iran is going to respond in a manner which is going to be worse than the one we just saw. Well, uh, I, I think the objective, uh, of course, and this is what we've been hearing in the news all day, uh, was world leaders uh, urging both uh, sides to restrain uh, any further escalation. I think it's clear that the Iranians um, view this as being an appropriate response to the Israeli uh, attack on their consulate in Damascus. Um, and they have made pains to say that they, quote unquote, consider the matter closed. I think the question uh, sitting before us is, of course, the Israelis, uh, which is to say, what what are their calculations? Um, and uh, the Israelis have, for many years, uh, adopted a doctrine uh, which in the security studies we would call conventional deterrence. Uh, which is to say they seek to inflict unacceptably high levels of pain on their adversaries uh, in an attempt to stop any attacks on them. So the question is, if, if they are going to continue with this doctrine of conventional deterrence, what might come next? Um, and as your reporter has just outlined in a very comprehensive report, uh, there are simple geographic limitations to what these two countries can do with each other, which is to say, in most normal interstate wars, you would have countries neighboring each other, closing with one another uh, militarily. And of course, neither country can do that because they're thousands yes. of miles away from each other. Professor Russell, now Israel has made it clear that they want to now obviously hit back and as you mentioned conventional deterrence is a measure that they've always used in the past going by past yeah. it seems that they will be planning something here how will that impact the united states well of course uh, it, it greatly uh, impacts the united states um uh, prime minister israeli prime minister benjamin netanyahu has long wanted the united states to be involved in a war against iran and he's uh, it's one of the things he would like to see happen. He would actually like to see the current war in Gaza widen to include a wider conflict with Iran, in which the United States, of course, does the bulk of the fighting and does the heavy lifting. Um, now, the United States, up until this point, has successfully uh, avoided this. Uh, like Israel, we have been in an undeclared war against uh, Iran. In the case of the United States, ours dates to 1979, basically, with the takeover of the American embassy and the ascent to political power of the Islamists, the Ayatollah Khomeini. Uh, so since that point, we've been in this undeclared war, and successive American presidents have worked very hard to make this an undeclared war, in other words, to keep it from becoming an open shooting war. Uh, and so uh, I think this is President Biden's uh, approach as it was by his predecessors. Now the question is, uh, here we have the Israelis and, and uh, uh, the Biden administration has shown no ability to influence the Israeli decision-making process on, in, in, on whether and under what circumstances yes. to use force. Um, and uh, so I, I think this is the $60,000 question is, can the United States restrain yes. uh, Israel, its client state, from taking f further retaliation? And I, and I wish I could say I had a lot of confidence in the Biden administration's ability to do this. But to date, Israel has not taken any of America's advice into account. Of course, a lot of possibilities going forward, but one thing's for sure, Israel seems keen on a hit back and U.S. support for Israel has been termed as ironclad by the U.S. president himself. A lot of developments yeah. are, yet to coming, are yet to be coming in and we are going to be tracking those closely. Thank you so much for joining in, sir. That was Professor James Russell joining us from Montreal.